Whenever we talk about the Starship system, Starbase in Texas often comes to mind, home to nonstop activity and constant innovation. But over in Florida, things are picking up speed as well. After a long period of relative quiet, the launch complex at LC-39A is now undergoing major upgrades. These developments are setting the stage for future Starship operations at one of the most historic sites in the aerospace world. So how is construction progressing at Florida's launch pad? Let's dive into the latest updates in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Starship's future is growing more ambitious by the day, and to support this vision, SpaceX is rapidly expanding its launch infrastructure, not just at Starbase, but now at Kennedy Space Center in Florida as well. At Starbase, Pad B is the focus. It features a new flame trench and an upgraded orbital launch mount, a major evolution from the original Pad A design. These upgrades aim to handle the demands of next-generation Starship missions, and now this same system is coming to Florida. Back in 2022, SpaceX built a full launch tower with Megazilla arms at Launch Complex 39A, followed by a tank farm and an OLM modeled after Pad A. But last year, the Florida OLM legs were suddenly dismantled, signaling a full redesign. It became clear SpaceX would implement the new flame trench system at LC-39A, similar to those at Massey and Starbase's Pad B. Recent images show trenches being excavated next to the Starship Tower at LC-39A, right where the old OLM once stood. This suggests Florida is following the same construction sequence. Dig trenches, pour a foundational concrete layer, install components like flame buckets and trench walls, then seal it with a final concrete pour. With these upgrades, SpaceX is clearly building for high cadence, powerful Starship launches on both coasts. To support this entire setup, SpaceX is also building an advanced tank farm nearby. In addition to holding liquid methane and liquid oxygen, the farm will include massive water tanks used to cool the flame trench during launches. This water will help absorb and dissipate the intense energy and pressure generated by Starship's engines, reducing the risk of structural damage. The flame trench system is particularly important because it's designed to handle the tremendous force of a Starship launch. Starship currently uses the Super Heavy Booster with 33 three Raptor engines, which together generate more than 7,000 tons of thrust. To deal with this immense power, the Florida Flame Trench will use a dual flame bucket configuration, an innovation that doubles the system's capacity for heat and force redirection. This design promises longer lasting durability and higher reliability compared to the water-cooled steel plate system currently in use at Pad A, which has shown signs of wear after repeated launches. More than just a short-term solution, the flame trench at LC-39A is being built for long-term, high-frequency use. The system at the Massey test site has already proven the effectiveness of this design, successfully supporting static fires that lasted nearly a full minute. That's an impressive benchmark, and a strong indication that the new system in Florida will be capable of handling even greater demands. And those demands are coming fast. While the current Starship version, version 1, is already powerful, SpaceX is actively developing more advanced variants, including V2 and V3. These future models may incorporate the next-generation Raptor 3 engine, pushing total liftoff thrust well past 9,000 tons. Some internal documents, including filings with the FAA, even hint at experimental versions of Starship that could surpass 10,000 tons of thrust by increasing the number of engines. These massive upgrades, paired with SpaceX is planned to launch up to 44 times per year from Florida, make the Flame Trench system an essential part of the infrastructure. Alongside the Flame Trench, SpaceX has revealed plans for even more improvements to the Florida launch complex. These include the construction of a new catching tower, potentially enabling full booster and ship recovery at the site, and the possibility of using drone ships for landings. These changes are intended to make Starship launches in Florida as comprehensive and frequent as possible. Looking ahead, it's likely that Florida's that Florida's upgraded launch system will be ready for action by the end of this year. If all goes well during testing, we could see the first launches from this site in mid-2026. These early missions may include propellant transfer testing and the debut of the unmanned Starship HLS variant, which is a critical part of NASA's Artemis program. But launch infrastructure isn't the only thing SpaceX is expanding in Florida. Plans are already underway to extend the Roberts Road facility, turning it into a major Starship manufacturing center. There's even talk of building a Gigafactory-style facility to 
support stacking, inspection, and refurbishment of starships similar to what's being developed at Starbase. Expanding starship operations to Florida, operations to Florida brings challenges. The region's porous soil and high water table complicate construction, especially for deep foundations like flame trenches. SpaceX also has to manage regulatory hurdles and ensure Falcon 9 missions remain unaffected. Nearby launch providers like Blue Origin and ULA may raise concerns about Starship's high launch cadence. However, SpaceX isn't starting from scratch. Their experience at Coastal Starbase gives them a solid foundation. And NASA, heavily invested in Starship for Artemis, has strong incentive to support progress at LC-39A. Will Florida's Starship site, especially its flame trench, be a game changer? Let us know in the comment section down below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates on SpaceX's push for faster, more powerful, and reusable spaceflight. In other SpaceX-related news, the company has once again proven its mastery of reusable rocketry with a rapid series of Falcon 9 launches, highlighting its strength in high-frequency operations. Over the course of just a day and a half, roughly 36 hours, SpaceX launched three separate Falcon 9 missions from three different launch pads across California and Florida. This impressive feat reinforces the company's dominance in the launch industry and highlights the reliability and flexibility of the Falcon 9 system. The launch spray began on the morning of April 20th at 8.29 a.m. Eastern from Space Launch Complex 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. On this mission, a Falcon 9 carried 22 Star Shield satellites into orbit as part of the NROL-145 mission for the U.S. National Reconnaissance Office, or NRO for short. This marked the 10th flight supporting the NRO's next-generation proliferated architecture, a network of satellites intended to increase the agency's global surveillance capabilities. Following a smooth liftoff, the booster successfully landed on a drone ship stationed in the Pacific Ocean, notching its 12th landing, another testament to SpaceX's precision and reuse capabilities. Just over 19 hours later, at 4.15 a.m. on the 21st, another Falcon 9 lifted off, this time from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The mission, CRS-32, was a critical cargo resupply flight to the International Space Station. On board was the Cargo Dragon spacecraft carrying essential supplies, experiments, and equipment for the astronauts on board the ISS. The booster for this mission, B-1092, performed a successful return, landing at Landing Zone 1 at Cape Canaveral, marking its third landing. By the 22nd, at 8.40 a.m. Eastern, the Cargo Dragon had completed its rendezvous and docked with the ISS, continuing SpaceX's flawless track record of Dragon deliveries. Then, at 8.48 p.m. on the evening of the 21st, a third Falcon 9 rocket launched from Space Launch Complex 40, also in Florida. This mission, called Bandwagon 3, was a rideshare flight carrying a mixed payload that included a reconnaissance satellite for South Korea, a re-entry capsule developed by a private European company, and a weather satellite for Tomorrow Companies Incorporated. The booster for this mission, B-1090, landed successfully at Landing Zone 2, achieving its third recovery as well. These three launches from three different pads in such a tight time frame brought SpaceX's social media channels to life. On X, the company company proudly highlighted the accomplishment. Three launches from all three launch pads in California and Florida in around 36 hours. While this is an incredible pace, it's not even the fastest the company has managed. Back in March, SpaceX completed three missions in just 13 hours, setting an industry-defining standard for launch cadence. Regardless of records, this most recent series of missions marks SpaceX's 46th launch of the year. Considering it's only April, the company is on a mission to accelerate its pace in order to reach its annual target of more than 180 flights in 2025. With an average of roughly one launch every two days, the Falcon 9 is undeniably the workhorse of modern spaceflight. SpaceX's momentum stands in sharp contrast to its competitors, particularly in the context of Amazon's Project Kuiper. As SpaceX continues launching at an unmatched pace, other companies are struggling to get their hardware off the ground. The upcoming Atlas V mission, now targeting a 7 p.m. Eastern launch on April 28th, will attempt to deploy the first batch of operational Kuiper broadband satellites into low Earth orbit. The mission, called Kuiper 1, represents Amazon's first significant step in building its satellite constellation designed to deliver high-speed internet globally. This is a pivotal launch, 
This is a pivotal launch for both Amazon and ULA. ULA's Atlas V, while reliable, is nearing the end of its operational life. Originally, this mission was scheduled to fly earlier in April, but faced several delays due to weather and issues with launch range availability. According to ULA CEO Tori Bruno, the mission is finally locked in for a late April window, and preparations are continuing at full speed. Amazon, which launched two prototype Kuiper satellites last year to validate its system, plans to deploy more than 3,200 satellites as part of its constellation. But unlike SpaceX, which vertically integrates hardware production, launch services, and satellite deployment, Amazon depends on multiple external partners. Besides ULA, Amazon has also signed contracts with Ariane Space for the Ariane 6 rocket, Blue Origin for the upcoming new Glenn vehicle, and future missions with ULA's next-gen Vulcan Centaur rocket. The issue is that none of these alternative rockets are fully operational. The Vulcan Centaur has flown only once, and it is still in the early stages of proving its reliability. Ariane Space's Ariane 6 has yet to make its debut, and Blue Origin's new Glenn remains in development. As a result, the aging Atlas V, designed decades ago, is now carrying the weight of Amazon's ambitious plans. The irony is unmistakable. In its early planning, Amazon deliberately excluded SpaceX from its Kuiper launch contracts, likely due to competitive reasons. Musk's Starlink is Kuiper's direct rival. But that decision now appears to be a costly one. SpaceX has since surged ahead, launching hundreds of Starlink satellites, growing a robust global user base, and proving its reusable rockets can handle a relentless launch pace. Even if the Kuiper-1 mission aboard Atlas V succeeds, Amazon still faces serious uncertainty regarding how to deploy the rest of the satellite fleet. As deadlines and regulatory commitments loom, delays in launch vehicle readiness could threaten the long-term viability of Project Kuiper's rollout. In the meantime, SpaceX is showing no signs of slowing down. With every new launch, they continue to extend their lead in reusability, cost efficiency, and raw launch cadence. So the big question remains, while others are still gearing up, how far ahead will SpaceX be by the time their competitors are finally ready to join the race? This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.